After playing Elden Ring's closed network test some 70 hours this past week, I wanted to share my thoughts on the new open-world Souls-like game being developed by From Software and published by Bandai Namco. Elden Ring is shaping up to be a Game of the Year candidate in 2022, but how will the open-world aspects hold up to other games in the same genre? I'll get into that later in this video. But first, let's talk about how Elden Ring plays and what I really enjoy about this extremely ambitious title. If you want to talk about Elden Ring directly with us, we'll be live all week with Elden Ring content on our Twitch channel too. First off, let me just say that the closed network test area is absolutely massive and is much larger than From Software has ever showcased in any such test and was way larger than I personally expected. There's absolutely no way you can finish it in one three-hour play session, which all of the network sessions are, so if you're playing on Friday, then make sure you plan to attend at least one more slot and possibly a third if you want to experience everything it has to offer. Your progress carries over from one session to the next, so no worries there. Stepping into Elden Ring's vast world feels extremely familiar as the game runs on an upgraded version of the Dark Souls 3 engine, though Elden Ring does feel more alive and vibrant than past From Software titles. Trees sway in the breeze as you ride by, and grass moves around you. The lighting changes based on the position of the sun, and the day and night cycle combined with dynamic weather really drive this home. Enemies also wander the landscape in search of prey, or perhaps with other goals in mind that aren't quite clear. What shocked me about Elden Ring, in a good way, is that pretty much from the start of the demo you can go just about anywhere your heart desires. You have absolute freedom to head to the castle in the distance, or you can head down to the beach and see the giant land octopuses. Yes, that's what they're actually called. Or maybe you want to explore some dungeons, take on some bosses right away, and find some nice loot. You are free to do any and all of these things as you see fit, and it's a soul's buffet. So many places to go, so many things to see, and so many secrets to find. It's a dream come true, even if it takes a bit to get used to the mount and fast traveling. And just a note about fast traveling before I forget. It was a controversial topic, I know, but once you play the game, you realize it was the right call. The world is simply too big to be running back and forth all the time, and there is too much verticality to not have it. Without fast travel, you'd spend a lot of hours just riding to and from places you've already been, and while that may be fun for some, I think it would drain on most players after a while. The general concept of Elden Ring is that once you step into the world, the little golden strands will show you the general main quest direction, and you can follow it immediately or venture off the beaten path. There are NPCs, dungeons, bosses, and loot to find, and interesting areas riddled with lore await you. You'll rely on your spirit steed Torrent to traverse the lands between, allowing you to get where you want to go much more quickly, even fighting enemies from horseback if you so choose. And all of this is packaged with classic Souls combat and multiplayer that From Software is famous for. You'll take time in between outings to upgrade your gear and change up your skills to see what you like and don't like, and in many ways Elden Ring feels more like a proper RPG than past From Software titles. There is simply far more agency than ever before, allowing for many viable combinations and builds. This might be my favorite thing about Elden Ring, as I love to tinker with my build constantly as I find new equipment, try new skills, and get more spirit summits. Having completed the demo on all five of the classes, I can tell you that they all play very differently and will markedly affect your playthrough of the demo. So much so, in fact, that I urge you to take your time with this decision and watch our video covering them or plan on making multiple runs with different classes. But since you have a very limited window to play, if you want to experience the whole network test, you should pick one class and stick with it. There's too much to see and do. Magic is also the strongest it has ever been in any From Software game except for Demon's Souls. Elden Ring favors the ranged player, and incantations and sorceries are the primary means of dealing ranged damage in the network test, unless you want to use the one bow available. It's really difficult to reliably hit anything while mounted in melee, giving range the edge there. Spells also have the advantage of being able to hit in an area in many cases, allowing you to face down some of Elden Ring's larger packs of enemies much more easily. In short, I've fallen in love with the magic of Elden Ring, and I say that as a player who has hardly used magic at all outside of Demon's Souls. The spells are outstanding. One of the biggest changes you will notice is the ability to change skills on your weapons, allowing you to mix and match as you see fit. You cannot use every skill on every weapon, but from all indications you will be spoiled for choice in the full version of the game. You can change these anytime you rest at a side of grace, and I urge you to experiment with them because skills in Elden Ring are actually very useful, and learning to use them properly can make all the difference. In some ways, Elden Ring feels more like a true ARPG where you rely more on your skills and magic, only using your light and heavy attacks now and again. It sounds crazy, I know, but you'll just have to play the game and see what I mean. Adding a little bit of a twist to this is the fact that many of these skills, Ashes of War, also come coupled with different damage types, meaning that you can not only add a different skill to your weapon, but change it to a magic or lightning version at the same time. There are multiple skills that can do this, so you'll get to choose from several magic ones that have different skills, and these Ashes of War also change the scaling of the weapon. 
You'll upgrade your weapons with smithing stone shards and change the scaling and damage by slotting Ashes of War into your weapon. Another new introduction is item crafting, which allows you to gather materials around the lands between and make consumables on the fly. These range from things that allow you to replenish stamina more quickly, like the grass items found in the Souls games, to sleep arrows that can be used to incapacitate enemies. Most open world games have some sort of crafting, so it's not a huge surprise Elden Ring does, but I didn't find myself using it as much as I'd hoped. I've never been one to use many consumables in Souls games anyway, so perhaps others will use this more than I did. There's certainly a lot to explore and discover for crafting that may not be immediately obvious. Enemies and bosses still have the same classic From Software feel, and some like Margit the Fell Omen may take you a while to kill depending on your setup. Others you might get the first time around, and some have had their movesets pulled straight from other From Software games, like the Tree Sentinel that will remind players of Gyobo Mistaka Onuma from Sekiro, or Akil the Dragon, which is a combination of Dark Eater Madir and the Nameless King's Dragon from Dark Souls 3 or the giant crab, which is literally the exact same enemy from Dark Souls 3. I know there has been some discussion about the reusing of animations and assets in Elden Ring, and many of these things have been lifted straight from Dark Souls 3, and honestly, I was initially disappointed about the quantity of things recycled. However, as I made it further and further into the demo, and I realized not only was I seeing things pulled from Dark Souls 3, but also Sekiro, Bloodborne, and even Demon Souls, I realized that Elden Ring is the culmination of From Software's body of work. Elden Ring is the game that puts everything they've done and learned together into one huge package, and the nostalgia levels are off the charts. If you spend some time talking to the NPCs, it's immediately apparent that this isn't a crazed world like the ones of Souls. People have allegiances, backgrounds, and motivations, and these are expressed eloquently and without strange-sounding laughs and cackles. If you read through the item descriptions, the background of the world begins to form, and you'll gain a glimpse of how the involvement of George R.R. Martin may have impacted the conceptualization of the lands between. The schools of magic, the churches, the dragons, and even the traveling vendors all share in a consistent and well-thought-out story rather than the much more cryptic and fan-powered Souls counterpart. You should certainly try speaking to NPCs multiple times as you complete content as they will reward you with new dialogues and expand upon this new universe. The information is provided in a straightforward but compelling manner, so you won't necessarily have to rely on a third-party source to fill you in on what's going on. Lastly, we come to the open world aspect itself. When we found out that Elden Ring would be open world, I think many people wondered just how exactly that would work in a Souls-type game. From Software excels at expertly crafting levels, predicting the movements of players, and placing traps and encounters in just the right places like an expert dungeon master in a D&D session. So how does that translate in an open world setting where players' actions are far less predictable? Well, the answer is that it does so just fine. Elden Ring handles itself well enough in this aspect to justify the addition of open world, but obviously it's not as good as if every single inch had been painstakingly crafted and tested like in previous From Software titles, because they simply didn't have the time or resources to pull that off on this scale. And the scale of Elden Ring is absolutely outrageous too, for a Souls type of game. If you compare the map we got to play in the network test with that shown by Bandai Namco during their gameplay reveal, you begin to realize that the demo isn't one-sixth of the game, it's actually far more likely to be a twelfth of the game, which I absolutely cannot begin to wrap my mind around. I spent nearly 70 hours exploring every inch of the network test, and I know there are still more things there that I have not seen. Elden Ring has no fog of war and locations don't appear on the map until you find them, so there is no real way to know what you haven't found other than riding around places you've already been triple-checking you didn't miss anything. This can be frustrating at times because you really do want to find everything, but you don't want to wander around aimlessly for hours trying to do it. However, should it remain the same at launch, we will have you covered with the wiki, so make sure you bookmark it because it will help you find everything. Final thoughts. Elden Ring is some of the most fun I've had this year, and I literally played almost without sleep for the entire weekend that flew by. And I was just playing what is likely a fraction of this massive game. I finished the demo with each and every class, and I tested all spells and most of the weapons and their skills, and I have a fairly good idea of what Elden Ring has to offer, and it is grand indeed. However, it's the unknowns that have me most curious. There are very few weapons and armor in the demo, and From Software has stated that there will be more than Dark Souls 3 when tallied up. This means From Software is holding the vast majority of its content back for full release, so you are only seeing but a scratch of what Elden Ring has to offer. As good as Elden Ring is with so little of what they have being used, I can't even imagine what it'll be like when all of their content is present in the game. We will likely have to hunt for all its secrets together, and I simply cannot wait until February. Stay tuned for more Elden Ring coverage as we cover all five classes in the network test and give you some helpful tips if you'll be playing on Friday, spoiler-free as much as possible. 
And for those of you that can't play, a video highlighting all the weapons, spells, armor, and skills available in the demo, and maybe a few bosses too. So what do you guys think of Elden Ring after seeing all the gameplay footage? Are you guys going to be playing the network test on Friday? Let us know in the comments below.